Good morning, everybody. I am trying to get another day started here at Las Conchas Del Mar at the build site. I want to say hello to you guys, but I need to get a couple of these guys busy on some tasks that they're not sure what I want them to do right now. So I'm going to get Ammon and Uncle working on something, and I'll be right back. So when we're up there forming on the walls, I'm getting Uncle and Ammon to prepare to render the outside of this hollow block on this fish tank. Uh, I want to get that sealed in good. So I got them cleaning up around it, doing a little prep work. They're going to do three sides on it because I'm not going to waste time on this side because once we remove this work shed, I'm going to add an additional tank out over here. It'll be another one that size again. It come over somewhere near where this table is here. And this wall here will actually be the wall forming one side of that tank. So there's no sense in me wasting any effort on that. So they're gonna go around and cut off all the extra steel here that was sticking up we don't need. Uh, plaster over or render over the top of uh, where that steel is and kind of form a cap on top of this tank right here. Uh, we just wanna get it all finished up and dressed up for its finality too because I'm about to have soil brought in and we're gonna do some backfilling on this lot. All these beds that look so high right now, uh, probably 50% of the way there on that, up probably almost maybe within two inches of that concrete surface there is all gonna get backfilled in here. And we're, we've been taking our leftover concrete and encasing this uh, PVC tube going out here to this tank, that too will have soil all over the top of it and you won't see it. And the reason I put the concrete, one thing it gave it some protection right now. And another thing is that if somebody decides they're gonna plant a tree or do this and that, or randomly dig a hole, things people do, taking that bar they use to stab into the ground, that spade looking bar, they'll hit that concrete know something's there and they won't bust open the PVC pipe. So every time we have a little project and there's a bucket or two of concrete or rendering left over, we case, encase the pipe here. We did the same thing for the sewer pipe over there too, going right along that bed and going up here to the septic tank right through Melinda's little garden right there. And meanwhile, I got the guys up here doing some more prep work, uh, extending the three inch drain tubes that'll come from the roof deck over there, getting those extended. And we're gonna do more steel preparation for forming walls inside of here. Uh, so that'll get this all set up of where the next wall is gonna be. So he's sitting up finding the middle of the column here, right where the steel is in the middle of it. Joel, he's prepping up some form boards over there. I've got Nardo cleaning the steel up there high where we had a tarpaulin that shredded and hooked on all those little wires. And I don't want all that shredded up tarpaulin uh, in my concrete when we pour it up there on those beams. So and we're, we're about to form those beams. And so I need that on out of there. I told him do it early this morning up there before it gets super hot because it is that time of year that it's getting super hot. Let's see if the drill is still dead today. Yep, I think this is the rest in piece. I think it's done. Let's take it apart and see if there's anything to do for it, but I think this drill's done. Um, they were doing all that real heavy work with it, pulling out screws and they were doing it in second gear instead of first. Priced around those cordless tools that they offer here. I don't like them first of all. I saw no quality in them. Um, they would have a brand name like you know. I'm not gonna say no names. That brand name like you know. But in no way does it resemble the models that I know those brand names have. And so I feel it's just a unit being made out there probably in China and it's getting probably maybe illegally a company's branding on it 
and being sold throughout stores here in this country, probably with illegal branding on it, and in big name brand stores carrying this stuff uh, with illegal branding on it. And let me tell you, even while I'm in the stores and I'm talking to the guys in the tool departments, they'll be saying, you know, oh, what about this uh, American-made brand down here? And I'll look at it and go, that does not look like American-made brand. And then they kind of giggle and say, it's the same one as this China one up here. It's some name I've never heard of in my life. And you look at them, and they are. They're identical. And, of course, a big price difference. And I'm like, what the heck, you know? Uh, this is what that, that integrity of, of stealing those names should not be allowed. You know, it's... It's, if, you, if you're going to do it, at least clone the unit or it's pretty much the same unit. It's not even a clone. It's a, don't even resemble the real deal, you know. <laughs> uh, but they just put the color, use their colors, and put their name on it. It happens a lot. It happens a lot. And this is the things that... Uh, causes some aggravations between companies and, and countries yeah beware what you buy beware what you buy that's all I can say um, if you want some of that uh, tools like that from China I mean just buy them in whatever China name it is and uh, don't support that fake name stuff I'll just say that or make sure you're buying original that's why I bought that Milwaukee down there. It was not uh, a fake China clone. It was really a Milwaukee tool licensed out of Germany and built in Germany and imported here. And I can tell by the quality of it too. It's really great. <laughs> some of these are roof drains a roof drain roof drain and one down there's roof drain that one over there's roof drain but that particular one is a sewer drain it is not drain the roof that is uh that's going directly to the sewage and that's the one that we have hooked up that if we want to ever have a little small CR up on the roof deck or anything up there that we need to drain to the septic that's our access point into it and as well it's working currently as a vent stack as well and we have one other vent stack this one in the middle here is also a vent stack and uh, we extended it up already because I was afraid that it maybe Mott Mott was gonna faint <laughs> I didn't want Mott Mott to pass out breathing that tube right there <laughs> it was a poison gas because <laughs> uh, it is active right now all the way to the septic tank yeah something you don't see a whole lot of in this country and that is vent stacks being put in very important though very important bonbons outside and he just brought me some more of these pieces for the ceiling for my lots so these are the round ones I showed you guys for in the CR and these are the ones that we're going to use throughout the rest of the house as you see it's a square and we knock the corners off and then i have a nice style router bit that'll give a, a beautiful edge not just a round edge it'll give a beautiful edge that i plan to go around these and dress these up but he's got some stuff ready for my doors down there right now so or i say doors front door he's only doing my front door and I want to head down there and look at it and get a solid measurement on that because we're ready to cast the opening for that door. And I just don't want any mistakes. So he's got it a little bit more together. Let's go see what he has going on. I tell you, me and Joel will come there. So, uh, yeah, extend that up so that it takes shape the whole way. Joel, let's go down to Bon Bon shop. He's here. Let's go look at that door. He says he has it together. Okay. You ready? Yeah. All right, you driving? 
Huh? Bike, only bike. You're driving? Only bike. <laughs> <laughs> you're, am I riding on the handlebars or on the bike? <laughs> That's what we call. <laughs> yeah, the other one. Yeah. <laughs> See what's happening at bonbons here. Man, I should have brought some bags and got some of these shavings. So here is my door being built right here. Hey, um. This will be my side light windows. Side lights. See the style here on it. Looking nice. How wide? One fifty three. One how are we gonna do this down here? Oh. Or do you have a piece going in there or something? Yeah. So what's your plan? I don't plan no more. We need to know how tall. Hey, Joel, what will because we're gonna have to allow for um the tile and all in there and stuff too. Yeah, follow that one. That, that's that'll be really good. That'll get threshold place and everything. That'll work out perfect. This one will still be the same as this one. Yeah. So that'll be the one we're gonna base it on. So what what you got there? Let's make it. Let's make the opening 220 so we got some adjustment. Yeah. Yeah. Leave me a little bit more space for the because, for the, because the door swelling and stuff during uh, wet season. We've had that problem on all of our other places. They make them too tight, and then the doors are hard yeah, to open sometimes. Okay, I'll give you. You know what I mean? Make a bigger space here. Yeah. No, make it wider. See, you got it so tight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Make it, make it more of a space in there, like this. I want it, I want it the space. Yeah, like, like this. When we install the door. Yeah, I just want it really clean looking. though. I don't want it like all, like my other door over there. When they planed it afterwards. Man, they had it all rough and ugly. Okay. That's thing uh, up here too at the top. Leave a make sure it's got a, a little bit of a space there. Okay. I think it's all good. It's all good. Okay. It's a beautiful door. I like this. It looks nice. Nice door. If I if you finish this. Oh, 
sideline. Cleopatra set old, old style also ah. This one, I'll, I'll show you We're doing like this now Ah, oh, that's gonna be so mm. nice Cleopatra, they call that Cleopatra. How many are you doing like that? I know you got many pieces. So all that's for one? One set, one set. That's about six pieces. One long, two short. Okay, okay, I see now. Yeah, that is pretty yeah. cool. So that's what you're turning out with all those pieces there. That's going to be beautiful. It's going to be very nice. Melinda like very much. Cleopatra. <laughs> What's funny, you saying that she might like Cleopatra? Let me show you something in my phone. Because it's funny him saying that Melinda might like that Cleopatra style, and I laugh because Melinda, my Facebook messenger, is nicknamed Cleopatra, and she has me nicknaming her phone Thor because I'm always slamming my hammer down. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, that's the pieces you're cutting right there? Oh, these are the pieces he's cutting. Is this your template? No, 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 not that one. Not that? <laughs> Those are the pieces he's cutting there for my lights, though. Right there. I really like all the work going on here. I forgot to bring some sacks. Oh, I, I forgot. Oh. Catching little things here. I got ready to form this uh, CR wall. I noticed that my plywood is really close to the column down there and far out up here. Huge difference. And they were supposed to check the plumb on this yesterday uh, when they were building this beam. But whoever checked it, they need to go to see the eye doctor <laughs> because it is super far out. And then while I'm standing here, I catch things like this, the steel and the wall. This should have been, if you can see it here, this should have been over the top of this stirrup and hooked behind it. They shaped it correct, but they didn't install it correct. It's supposed to be hooked around behind like this is. Hooked around behind. Hooked behind. But these on the wall are not hooked behind. Look at this. Just tied to the side of it. And uh, that is incorrect installation right there. And the thing is, they probably didn't reach. And the reason it didn't reach is most likely because the column was out of level and all of these are installed wrong all installed wrong so they need to cut all these loose we need to get the column over where it's supposed to be and then we need to retie that properly hooking around behind this back here we can just bend it we can get it out here and just bend it around this way and get it hooked behind these two and these guys know what to do now so I'm gonna get out of their way this side was done correct See, this was done correct. Yeah, correct. It's whoever did this way and installed the beam yesterday with the column, not plumb. And this is where you'll lose time. I mean, and this is something that I could see it with naked eye. You know, it, I'm like, something's wrong here. And uh, that, that should easily be, be caught right there. So then you get to spend time reworking it. I mean, I'm just now looking at this one. This is super bad. It is actually hooked 
onto my PVC electrical conduit. Look at this. It's actually rubbed up into the side of the conduit in there. You see that? Huh? Really? Hooked it on the electrical conduit. This is the work of Uncle Mulong in Nambin. Yeah, every one of those put in wrong. Look here, just floating out there in midair, not tied to nothing, and hooked around the, the PVC electrical conduit. So every one of them that was put in this wall coming this way is done wrong, and every one of them put in the wall coming from the other way is done right. And th that was with two different sets of people. And here, Joel's building the window buck for those 1.2 by 1.5 or basically you could call them a four foot by five foot windows. And then out here, they've been uh, finishing this pond, man. I want to tell you what, check this out. This looks so darn nice, man. It looks so darn nice. Look at that. I tell you, finishing something can really change the game. I knew that they would probably drop a little bit of cement and stuff inside and i'm about to put water in this and i said you know what before we backfill the ground around it and uh before we put fish and stuff in it and the cement gets dropped in and what if that cement kills the fish let's go ahead and get this thing topped and finished off and looking nice and it is it is look at that man they're doing a really great job let me back up from it They'll get that inside edge nice too. They're still working on it. So Joel just finished up building the buck, the window buck. Yeah. This uh, mock in what that window is going to be. We'll get it sandwiched in between the forms. Put some good wood in here that we can really screw down tight against so it don't swell out. It looks good. Yeah, yeah, make sure you screw it good. If it pushes out just a little bit, then that concrete slips in between there. Maybe it'd be easier to go up the front. Because it's going to the front anyway. Got the tank finished off there. We'll go around and we'll touch up with a little bit of that coating around that top edge so it'll look good hey uh marvin in the morning take a take a roller and take some of that rubber coating stuff just put it only on the inside here just only at the top around there don't put it up on this okay just on that inside yeah just on this part in here make it nice and clean don't drip it all over here everywhere looking bad do it nice and neat well guys thank you have a good evening. Sorry you didn't see me much. <laughs> the skinny black, get your hat. <laughs> here, I'll run over here on this side. We can block him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we got that done and uh joel made the, now he made the window buck but now he's got the door buck almost finished he's going to do some improvements to it tomorrow and add some more plywood in but that'll be the buck going in the wall for our front door right there so that's a pretty good success too so here's the other window buck right here that Joel made and I came up here earlier and marked the steel out on this front wall of where that's going and they cut it out. We'll come in and reinforce this now. Um, I'll get a, a proper opening tied in with a rebar and some diagonals on these corners. When you have a diagonal coming across here on the corners of where your window buck is with your rebar, say like if I tied it from up here a diagonal across where this corner is later on your concrete if you don't have that it may try to make a crack right there and that diagonal helps prevent that crack 
So you want to do them on all four corners. The steel's ready on this wall here as far as the uprights and uh, the cocoa lumber's put down for the wall between our master bath and closet in the front bedroom. Over here at the back, I cleaned all up here in our bedroom because <laughs> look at this. Here's the front of the house and coming around the bedroom and down the side. And it won't be long until we're going to uh, be done with these outer perimeter walls.